Let's lift our hands. Lift your hands if you can. Open your mouth and magnify the name of your God. Open your mouth and exalt the name of the Lord. I said open your mouth and talk to him and bless him. Give him glory. Forget about who is around you. Open your mouth and give him thanks. There's no one like him. Open your mouth and magnify his name. Open your mouth and exalt him. Your name is higher above all the names. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Lord. Would you lift your voice and say your name is higher? Open up your mouth and say your name is Jesus. Your name is Lord. Your name is Lord. Your name and magnify the Lord. He's been good to you. He's been good to us. you lift your voice and give God thanks. He has kept us in the last nine months of the year 2022 and we are in the tenth month of this year. If you are grateful for all that he has done, can you reflect in your mind the things that he has done in your life? Lift your hands to him, open your mouth and magnify him. Open your mouth and tell him thank you. Don't be greedy with your thanksgiving. He deserves it for the gift of life, for the gift of good health, for provision, for protection. Come on, don't just pray like you earned it. If you know that you are a product of the mercy of God, lift your voice. And tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Even if you don't know how to pray, just say thank you, Jesus. Again and again and again. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your great name. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Sing it. 
excited to be here tonight now if you would just give me a moment we are going to take about 10 minutes or so to pray for Nigeria as we all know yesterday was our independence day and Nigeria marked her 62nd independence independence celebration that means that we are 62 years as a nation and we have just begun the 63rd year today and we will take our time first of all to thank the lord for how far he has brought us as a nation and um, all that we have been through at the beginning there was civil war lives were killed according to statistics there were over a million people that died in the Nigerian Civil War between 1967 to 1970 but so far so good the Lord has kept us how many of you are proud to be a Nigerian listen let me tell you something about this nation there is nowhere in the world you go to that you don't find Nigerians and when you find them you find them successful whether they are doing legitimate work or illegitimate work is that true in business you find excellent nigerians in sports this year there were nigerians that broke world records in sport in entertainment we are all over the place every foreign celebrity wants to do a song with a nigerian artist yes or no it's true Oh, you're welcome. Good to see you. <laughs> and even if you're looking for scammers, if out of five you don't find a Nigerian, that list is not called, is not legitimate. Now I want us to take. Now that was just for a joke, anyway. I want us to take out just a minute to say, Lord, thank you for keeping this nation together. Thank you for preserving us, the most populous black nation more than 200 million people in the 36 states of this nation can you in one accord even if you don't like to pray for nigeria at least your family members are nigerians no be so uh -huh. so lift your voice and say lord we thank you for how far we have come 
as a nation mention the things the good things that you have seen him do for this nation despite terrorism despite banditry despite all kinds of evil devices god has kept us together open your mouth and thank him just for a minute lord we thank you for the nation nigeria i can't hear you if you're going to pray you are going to open your mouth and be vocal about your thanksgiving lord we thank you for preservation of life we thank you for our government we thank you for our citizens we thank you for our economy we thank you for the 36 states of the federation we thank you for the three tiers of government we thank you for the three arms of government our legislators we thank you for our judiciary we thank you for our president and his cabinet we thank you for the local government the state government what a nation blessed with numerous mineral resources there is no nation on the surface of the earth as gifted and as blessed in terms of natural resources in terms of human capacity like Nigeria come on as you stand lift your voice and thank you thank you in just a minute thank you thank you thank you now there are many things unfortunately there are many vices that has plagued our nation and because of that we are not harnessing our full potential so far 62 years not so good we are supposed to be more than where we are now we are the most blessed nation on the earth in terms of human resources in terms of natural resources but a lot of things have plagued our nation and nigeria is where she is the reason why we need to pray for this nation is because whether you like it or not in god's end time agenda nigeria is going to be at the forefront nigeria is nigeria is going to pioneer the last revival before the coming of the lord if you are a student of prophetic history you will know what i'm talking about now i hope you know that in scripture israel was not the only nation that god had covenant with god called israel my firstborn firstborn does not mean my only child is that true there are other nations involved and in isaiah chapter 18 if you read the whole of that chapter you will see that he gave vivid description of nigeria so nigeria is captured even in biblical prophecy he said a land in a, 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 whose land the, the rivers divide and when you look at the map of nigeria you see that the confluence of river Niger and river benue together down to the delta and the south south forms the letter y and y is for the name yahweh so god is so concerned about nigeria that he imprinted his name upon this nation yet we have been plagued with corruption i want to share some things with you because i want you to pray very very passionate for this nation nigeria in terms of corruption nigeria loses over 700 million us dollars every month to oil theft 
and from according to statistics you can check it you can check it out from january 2022 to july 2022 in seven months nigeria lost almost 10 billion us dollars just to oil theft how much is us looking for now this is if you convert it at the rate of 430 naira to a dollar and you all know what black market price is now isn't it how much is black market price currently now how much seven what seven yeah i, I need to i need to start doing business in dollars now amen so if you convert it to 700 that rate you see that it is well over that amount everything that has been done to check corruption in our country is intact yet corruption still thrives i think there are spirits we need to bind today there are forces fighting this nation that we need to pull down today let me tell you the truth the salvation of this nation will not come in 2023 election are you hearing me i know many of us articulated obedient and the other one that said what it's my turn with all due respect to all of them none of them have the salvation of this nation let me tell you the truth if the church does not arise nigeria will remain where she is and we need to pray when you come to our church buildings you see that we are prosperous the church in nigeria they, if they should calculate the income that the churches in nigeria generate is enough to pay the debts of this nation as far as religious tourism is con concerned nigeria is at the top but while we prosper as, at a, as a church our nation is bedeviled with all kinds of things and we can't say that we are doing we are practicing kingdom if we are not concerned about god's rule over our territorial landscape are we here that's why if you are a pastor or you are a minister and you are under the sound of my voice don't raise church members raise kingdom agents that will transform society make your church a community church are you hearing what i'm saying let them this the light of god that you that you have placed in them let them go and outshine it in their different spheres of influence so we are going to raise our voice to pray for nigeria nigeria is becoming becoming the world's capital for kidnapping it's like kidnapping is almost becoming a legitimate business now terrorism banditry all kinds of things yesterday i was watching a docu uh, uh, i think it's a doc no it's not a documentary or a program or something so the house committee i will not call the name of that committee interacting with that particular federal parastatal the leaders and I was so surprised how that the person chairing that committee probing the parastata was being accused of eating government funds. He was giving money to travel for a training on behalf of the nation. Flight tickets and Esther code. You know Esther code is when Nigeria is sending you to go somewhere to be trained. They'll give you some money. They call it Esther code. And he, he didn't go for the training. He, ate, uh, he didn't refund the money, the transport business class etiquette and Esther code. we need to pray we need to pray the corruption is everywhere and if we don't arise and pray you may say that it doesn't concern you because you are in your home but if this nation is in shambles it will affect every one of us all our medical professionals are leaving the country now you, I hope you know what that means now, it, it, it will not concern you now but the day your wife is in labor and you go to the hospital and there's no doctor that's the day you remember when i was raising this prayer point aso has been on strike for how many months now are we ready to pray isaiah chapter 1 verse 24 quickly before we pray we'll take about two three minutes to cry to god to intervene in our in our land in our nation he said therefore the lord says the lord of hosts the mighty one of israel i will rid myself of my adversaries and take vengeance on my enemies next verse i will turn my hand against you and thoroughly purge 
thoroughly purge away your dross and take away all your alloy. Go on. And I will restore your judges as at the first and your counselors as at the beginning. Afterward, you shall be called the city of righteousness, the faithful city, not a church, city. Zion shall be redeemed with justice and her penitent with righteousness. In the next two, three minutes, wherever you are, can you lift your voice and cry to the Lord for divine intervention? Say, O Lord, arise and intervene in our land. Intervene on our behalf against corruption against bad governance and bad leadership no no brothers and sisters you can pray better if you are following online please join us as we raise an intercession for nigeria don't just watch your neighbor pray open your mouth and cry to him he said i will avenge me of my adversaries as the first lord we cry to you for intervention, intervene, 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 put an end to bad governance, corruption, terrorism, banditry, kidnapping, all the plagues and vices that has befallen our nation, Lord, we cry to you as Jehovah's support, we cry to you as the God of Jehovah that rides the heavens to help us and we ask that you arise arise and intervene in our landscape arise intervene in our nation arise arise oh Jesus arise oh Lord of hosts intervene can you cry to him can you cry to him I can't hear you 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 I can't hear you. 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 Come and pray, come and pray, come and pray, come and pray. Come and pray. Come and pray. Listen, the second stanza of our national anthem, it says, O God of creation, direct our noble cause. He said, guide our leaders aright. Leadership is fundamental. I think one of the greatest problems in Nigeria is bad governance. We have more politicians than we have leaders. We have more selfish people than we have statesmen. A politician thinks of himself. A leader, a statesman thinks of country. Thinks of posterity. They make decisions that will affect the next 10, 20, 30 years. Most of the nations we celebrate today is because they had leaders from their foundation. Not only did they dedicate the nation to God, but they, they made policies, they implemented policies that will affect generations unborn. We are going to pray for this nation, particularly since election is around the corner. Lord cause your own assigned leaders for this nation to arise use this election as a platform intervene in our political space and raise god-fearing leaders listen listen let me tell you the truth i don't care if the next david of nigeria will be a muslim i don't care 
when it comes to politics i'm not i'm not i'm not sentimental as per religion no no i believe that the church should train and nurture leaders that will guide this nation aright but if the best person is a muslim i will vote for him are you hearing what i'm saying let's forget about all of this tribalistic and religious sentiment lord raise god fearing leaders leaders of equity of justice and of judgment leaders that will operate by your wisdom not the ones that will go to take their own share of the national cake lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus we are praying specifically as we approach the elections lord it is time for you to raise god-fearing men and women god-fearing leaders that will arise men and women that you will use to salvage the destiny of this nation to salvage the destiny of our land men and women that will operate by your wisdom men and women of justice of equity and of fairness not tribalistic people not sentimental leaders oh Lord raise such ones in our time raise such a one in our time raise men and women raise leaders raise statesmen raise men and women that have the nation at heart If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and come from their wicked ways, I, the Lord, will hear them from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. I will heal their land. If you pray, God will stretch from his hands and salvage this nation. You are good and your mercy is forever. You are good and your mercy is forever. In Jesus. Hey, Isaiah chapter 60 verse 18 We are going to pray for peace We are going to pray for peace Nigeria needs peace How can we have a nation with the motto Unity and faith Peace and progress Some of you don't even know You don't even know some of these things You are not compatriots Huh? peace and progress but nigeria is 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 almost becoming number one on the world's insecure nations it's a violence shall no longer be heard in your land can we shout amen to that amen. neither wasting nor destruction within your borders amen. but you shall call your world salvation amen. and your gates praise we are, going to, we are going to decree peace over the length and breadth of this nation. Over the borders of Nigeria. From the deserts of Yobe down to the creeks of Bielsa. From the coastal areas of Lagos down to the mountains of Taraba. We are going to decree peace. Listen, Jesus calls himself the Prince of Peace. Huh? You understand what that means? That means anywhere he is, there must be peace. How can we have a nation that has the signature of God on her and there is insecurity? In this land, I think this is 12 years now, insurgency. Rather than stop, stopping, it is evolving into another thing. From Boko Haram to Iswa. Only God knows from Iswa to the next one. But we are going to declare peace by all means. Are you hearing me? 
That means if God needs to kill some people to give us peace, let them go down. Do you understand that? We are declaring peace by all means to the six geopolitical zones of this nation. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Peace. Peace in our borders. Peace in our cities. Peace in the countryside. Peace in the urban areas. Oh, come on, come on, lift your voice and pray. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Come on, lift your voice and pray. we are going to pray for the elections coming up next year we are going to pray first of all that there will be peace all across this nation and we are going to come against every evil strategy being devised right now by the enemies of this nation to rig election we are going to command their plans to fail we are tired of rigging can't we have a fair election for God's sake yes or no Yes, we need fairness. We need the hand of God to intervene. Let there be a free and fair election. And let the next generation of God-fearing leaders for this nation emerge. Lift your voice in two minutes and open your mouth and pray that prayer. Come on, pray better if you can. In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Now you are going to pray two prayers for yourself before we sit down. Please, I hope you are not tired of praying. I hope you are not tired of praying. If you are sitting down, except you are sick, please stand up. All right? This is a special prayer service. So we came to do more of prayer. You are going to pray for yourself. As we come to the end of the year, I know that the enemy is, he has all kinds of schemes and strategies laid out. This is the moment where they do all they can to, to stock their blood bank in the spirit realm. So you will find a lot of accidents, killings, deaths, sicknesses and all kinds of things. But we are going to decree by prayers today that you will be exempted from it. In the name of Jesus. I told you last, year, last week that Ember Mount is a mindset, isn't it? That doesn't mean we will not pray against it. Oh. We will pray against it. So the first prayer you are going to pray is a prayer of divine exemption and preservation. 
over your life and over your family by the blood of Jesus. He said, I shall see the blood and it shall pass over thee. You are going to declare over your life and your family members divine exemption from evil and divine preservation from destruction from now to the end of the year in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus. Now lift your voice and open your mouth and pray. Divine exemption. Divine preservation. I said pray. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Divine exemption. Divine preservation. Divine preservation. Over my life. Over my family. By the blood. By the blood. Somebody plead the blood of Jesus. Over your life. Over your family. You will bury no one in this season. Accidents shall be far from you. A pass of the enemy will be far from your dwelling places. He said, There shall no evil before you. Neither shall any place in all your dwelling. For you shall be in danger of struggle than you. To keep me in all your ways. You are going to pray for your bodies. Listen to me. You are going to pray for your bodies. I want you to pray, take this prayer very... Are you tired of praying? I said, are you tired of praying? You are going to pray for your own body now. Your body. Your body. The Bible says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Isn't it? In Psalms 40, I believe in verse 8. He said, a body has thou given me. Sorry, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5, thereabout. Your body, I want you to know that your body is a vehicle. Your body is a conduit between heaven and earth. The reason why God is doing business with you today is because you have a body. The reason why God will use you is because you have a body. God is a spirit. God cannot operate on earth. He needs human bodies to function true. The Bible says we have this treasure. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. We have this treasure. Where? In acting vessel. So when you know you have something valuable, you ensure that the, the vessel, the container, is also valuable as well, isn't it? You are going to pray for your body because there are this end of the year that we are in, there are, I want you to believe it, that there are contentions of the enemy over your body. When you find unusual affliction pop up, you treated malaria last week, now you are down again with malaria, something is wrong. Are you hearing what I'm, I'm telling you? Listen, listen. The Bible says in the book of Jude, verse 8, that Angel Michael had to contend with Satan. Over what? So there are contentions over your body. And you need to, you need to intercept and arrest those contentions. Are you ready to pray? Every contention from the kingdom of darkness over your body this year from now to the end of the year i want you to open your mouth in the name of jesus arrest it intercept it cancel it destroy it in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray open your mouth and pray Every demonic contention over my body, every contention over my head, through the form of a fish, through the fish, through arrows, fire by day, through the pestilence, I arrest, I intercept, I revoke, I contend. I nullify, I cancel, I destroy. Are you pray? Are you pray? Are you pray? 
Open your mouth and prophesy divine health over your body. Divine health, longevity, long life. He said, with long life, the life shall be striving. But striving one to succeed. With long life, the life shall be striving. I'll show you my salvation. Prophesy, long life. Jesus. Name we pray. Please just give me a moment. We'll soon be seated. But I wish you could pray all through. The next prayer is going to be on your mind. Please lay your right hand on your head. You are going to pray for your mind. The first thing you will do, you will rebuke the wandering of your mind. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Many people, the reason why they wake up in the morning and fall into depression is because their mind wanders away. How many of you have greeted somebody before and it, you, it, you had to call his attention? He's standing with you, but you had to call his attention. Why? His mind is somewhere else. Wandering into things that are not necessary. And when the mind returns back, he returns back with thoughts that will cause depression. All kinds of mental affliction, emotional affliction. I want you to lift your voice and say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. I rebuke. I rebuke the wandering, the wandering of my mind, of my mind, and I declare, and I declare that from today, that from today, I have, I have a sound mind, a sound mind in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. We took the wandering of your mind. Every evil thought projected towards your mind, cancel it. Worries, depression, discouragement, despair. Cancel it, cancel it, cancel it. We took it, we took it. I am a principality <laughs> In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Finally you are going to declare peace of mind. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says he shall keep him in perfect peace. It's not just peace. Perfect peace. Him whose mind is stayed on thee. Sometimes you need to decree over your mind. Are you hearing me? And now that's why your hands are laid on your head. You are going to declare peace perfect peace over your mind from now to the end of the year nothing like depression at all times peace of mind whether you are asleep or you are awake whether you are at work or at home open your mouth and prophesy peace over your mind peace over the mind of your loved ones peace over the mind of your children peace over the mind of your spouse peace peace 
in Jesus name we pray please clap your hands together give God praise and take your seat in the presence of the Lord you are the most high you are the most high God Jehovah you are thrown in our midst there's no name like the name of the Lord none greater none wiser none to be compared with you we exalt and give you glory hallelujah 
the topic for tonight's teaching we're still on the series of spiritual warfare but tonight the topic is divine ambushment ambushment the more likely when you say ambush and then ment m-e-n-t-s divine ambushment how many of us are ready to receive from god this evening Right. I want you to write down the things that will be taught briefly. I'm not going to take long time teaching. I want us to pray again and then I will declare and prophesy over us and then we'll be done tonight. I want to show you by the help of the Spirit of God tonight. Like I told you last week, I said that this teaching will teach you or will help you know or receive some basic spiritual intelligences that is necessary for you in spiritual warfare for a long time the church has been on the defensive but it is possible for us to be on the offensive as far as spiritual warfare is concerned and as a matter of fact God wants us to be on the offensive amen so God wants us to go from being the oppressed to being the oppressor God wants us to go from being pursued to being the pursuer is that true one of the promises that God made to us in Deuteronomy 28 a covenant promise 
in verse 7 it says that i will cause your enemies that rise up against you to be smitten before your face he said they will come in one way and they will flee in seven ways tonight i want to teach you how to set trap for the devil you don't sound like you're excited this night you, you forgot your it seems you forgot your 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 your, your what's, what's the word now i will use you forgot your shout at home your groove at home I said this night I will teach you how to plot a trap against the devil. And you don't believe what I'm saying? That you can raise a siege against the siege of the enemy. If you don't know how to set traps, then you better know that the devil is in the business of setting traps. But the Bible says, surely he shall deliver me from the snare. Who put it there? Nature? No, the devil. So, the teaching tonight you will make you receive spiritual intelligence in such a way that if it is applied, before the enemy goes to set trap for you, he will fall into your own trap. And, uh, you guys are not excited at all this night. How can I be talking to majority of young people and we are this quiet? If you need to shout today, I need you to shout too. Shout that amen if you are shouting it better. You see, I want you to be excited at the word of God. Are you hearing me? When the word of God comes, you need to receive it with joy. In the parable that Jesus gave of the sower, there were those who received the word with joy. Are you hearing me? So when we go into the teaching tonight, you are going to learn a lot of things and I tell you the truth, when you apply these things, you will walk in victory every day of your life. Two things I want you to know before we go into the teaching tonight is, if you are going to be victorious in battles, because whether you like it or not, we live in enemy's territory. We live behind enemy lines. This earth, the Bible says the God of this world is the devil. And that's the reason why Jesus is making intercession for us at the right hand of God. You know why? Because we are living in enemy's territory. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? So as far as destiny and life is concerned and advancing the kingdom on earth is concerned, you cannot avoid spiritual warfare. And it is important that we increase and grow in our knowledge of the things that are amount to our victory as far as battles and warfare is concerned. Two things that you must know is number one, if you must be victorious in, in battles and you must help God's people enter into victory and deliverance, maybe as a servant of God or as an intercessor. Number one, you must hate wickedness. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 19, that the whole world lieth in wickedness. You must hate wickedness. Otherwise, you will forbear with wickedness around you and the devil will strangle a lot of people around you. You must hate wickedness. You must have an aggression in your spirit against evil and wickedness. You must be able to look into your family and see the mastermind of Satan and cry enough is enough. This chicken Christianity that we have practiced for a long time needs to come to an end. Are you hearing me? You know what I'm talking about? Say me, I no disturb anybody. Oh. Satan, I no touch you, no touch me. Oh. I did my own, or I didn't pray against any witch, oh, God forbid that kind of Christianity. That's a coward-like Christianity. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. Just one purpose, that he would do what? Destroy the works of the devil. And I don't, he, 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 he started it on the cross, and he left us behind to finish it. Are you hearing me? So you can want to play negotiations with the devil. You know, just like the way our government does now. We negotiate with kidnappers and terrorists. There's nothing like that, oh. 
every day that I have breath in my nose, I must do damage to the enemy. In fact, anytime I'm praying, one of the greatest moments of prayer I love is warfare. Once I sense the Spirit of God tilting me that way. You know, you don't have all the opportunity to do it. So you service the head of that demon very well. I, I thought I'm talking to people. You guys, you are looking at me. You had better like it, oh. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. Can I tell you something? You cannot advance in destiny without warfare, without battles. Where you are in life is a product of how many battles you have fought and conquered. Believe me or not. Staying on the ground, there's no problem. But the moment you decide to rise, all kinds of forces will try to act on you. But if the aeroplanes have learned how to act against the force of gravity using an opposing force called lift, the force of lift, I told somebody, I said, if witches have learned how to fly in the night, whether they are sick or they are well, then I will learn how to pray whether I am sick or I am well. Is that true? They fly always. You saw the person taking injection, he has malaria. During the day, but in the night it will fly. It's only believers that have condi- we, we everything we do as far as the faith is concerned is based on condition. We want it to be suitable to serve God. We want to come to church when it is suitable for us. If your church does not have fan or AC, I will not go. We want comfort, comfort, and God is looking at you, seeing the um, the, the the amount of lives and destinies that are depended on you depended on your breaking forth if you fought to come into this world who told you that you will not fight to stay alive he said having done all to stand and like i told you it is time for a militant church to arise our warfare is not physical no he said for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal Physically, we may appear peaceful, but make no mistakes. Are you hearing me? You see me bob my hair and look clean like this. I'm not like this in the spirit. Oh. In the spirit, I'm a rugged man. Are you hearing me? This one is for picture. It's for, for photo, photo, for camera. Are you hearing me? We'll do this packaging for camera. But when it comes to the things of the spirit, I am rugged. He said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, what happened? The kingdom of God. He didn't say drink kunu or drink pap. So brothers and sisters, one of the things that we must do, if we want to see sustained and successive victories, and if you want God to use you to bring deliverances unto Jacob, you must hate wickedness number one number two you must partner with the holy ghost the holy ghost should be your best friend as far as spiritual warfare is concerned the holy ghost is the one that can guide you is the one that can reveal to you the weapons that make for your victory not all weapons are utilized in a battle situation are you hearing what i'm saying battles are fought with strategy and with knowledge there are times where they need to send aircraft to go and bombard the enemy's territory. There are other times where they need to send, they need to position anti-aircraft guns. There are other times where they can now send ground troops to go and invade. So every battle you fight in life, there are custom-made weapons that will make for your victory. So if you want to prosecute battles spiritually and come as a victor, you must befriend the Holy Ghost. Not all battles are fought the same. Joshua had different strategies for every battle he fought. Read the book of Joshua. Joshua did not fight one battle the same. When it was time to fight Jericho, he said, go round seven times and be quiet. So we must hate wickedness and evil and have the aggression to eradicate such from amongst us. And number two, we must befriend the Holy Ghost. So tonight, divine ambushment.
second chronicles chapter 20 verse 17 and 22 second chronicles chapter 20 i prefer to read this particular scripture in king james translation this particular scripture please give it to us in king james translation second chronicles 20 verse 17 to 20 and 22 he said, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. I thought somebody shout amen to that. Amen. If you don't shout, I will stop the teaching and then we'll start praying. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Amen. Prophesy that to your neighbor. Say, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. I don't know, whatever battle situation is around your neighbor right now in his or her life prophesy that line again ye shall not need to fight in this battle many of us just you just smile you don't know you don't know what the person is going through so you don't know whether what you are saying is a prophecy are you hearing what i'm saying he said ye shall not need to fight in this battle set yourselves stand ye still and see the salvation of the lord with you O judah and jerusalem fear not nor be dismayed tomorrow go out against them for the lord will be with you verse 22 and when they began to sing and to praise the lord and to praise the lord said what come on talk to me the lord said what so you saw where i got the word from against the children of ammon ambushment simply means trap he set traps against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were what? Smitten. There are many times where the children of God in Scripture went to battle against the Philistines, or, or sorry, against their enemies. And there were several of such battles where they didn't have to fight. There were such battles where God fought for them, where their victories were achieved supernaturally. First Samuel chapter 7 from verse 7 to 10, the Bible tells us that the children of Israel had gathered together before prophet Samuel, raised a sacrifice to God. And when the Philistines heard that they had gathered together, the Philistines came out in battle array, feeling that they would trap the children of Israel and deal with them and destroy them. But the Bible says, after Samuel had offered a sacrifice and cried unto God in verse 10, the Bible says, the Lord thundered against the Philistines with a loud thunder. Today, that thunder of the Lord will be, will, will be released over the adversaries of your life. I said that thunder will be invoked over the adversity around your life. Those of you that were around last week and you had the prayer we prayed so don't give me that spiritual look of saying ah apostle don't call thunder yeah oh, no there are times where god needs to send thunder against the enemy are you hearing me those are elements and forces of the supernatural i wish this is you see that's the, that's the reason why we have so many casualties in the body of christ the issue of spiritual warfare is is being under thought if there's a language like that if there's an english like that many believers don't know how to engage the forces of the supernatural for their good the bible says the lord thundered and the thunder brought confusion against the philistines and they fled before the, the, the children of israel so there are several times in scripture where the enemy gathered against god's people but God supernaturally brought victory to his people by creating ambush against the enemy. By creating traps against the enemy. 2 Kings chapter 6 in verse 16 to 17. The king of Syria was angry because Elisha was always revealing his secrets to the king of Israel. Every time he came to attack Israel. The king of Israel will receive information from Elijah and act on that information and deflect the attack of the enemy. And so the king of Syria felt, let's just deal with the prophet. If we can cut off the spiritual guardian 
the entire nation will be doomed that is the reason why the first thing satan will attack in your life is not your finance is your money your, your your prayer life i i beg to say anything that gives you a firm footing spiritually if satan wants to come against you that's the first point of attack so sometimes he can even give you a job that will make you not pray again and after six months there's no difference between you and an unbeliever yes or no it's true that's why you have to discern every opportunity that comes to you. Not every opportunity is of God. Not every open door is from God. There are some job opportunities that when they come to you, you thank God, but you say no to it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Job opportunities that will expose you to some level of temptations that you know that you and God have not been prepared for. So the Bible says in verse 16, when they surrounded the city where Elisha was, the army of the Syrians, they felt that by surrounding the whole place, they have gotten Elisha. And Elisha's servant awoke and was afraid and began to cry out. And then Elisha said, Come down. He said, Do not fear. This was his reply in verse 16 to, the, to his servant. He said, For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. The Bible says, He that is in us is what? greater than he now are you conscious of that when you move around are you conscious of that if we are here now in the moment if as we are here if at any moment there is the sound of a bomb blast you will just see the attention of people everybody will begin to look some people have even marked the door some say the door will not be too wide because the door many people will crowd the door so this window in fact, some people, you, you, you will not imagine, well, you, you are free to laugh now. But this is just the truth. If God will open your heart, the heart of all of us here, eh? there are some people that when they come, the reason why they like sitting near the window is so that if anything happens, I will just too lay. That's what worry people call it, isn't it? It's a too lay. Yoruba say japa. Is that true? What does Hausa call it? When you when you take off, you escape. What was the word? Eh? Eh? Our own is always funerized. <laughs> when you go to other language, you, you hear it with, with muscle and with flesh. When you come to house, it will just what is rice in Igbo? Osikapa. Is that true? What is rice in house? Amen. But how's that language is a unique language. Amen. He said, Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And in verse 17, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of this man to see. And when his eyes opened, he saw divine ambushment. Somebody say divine ambushment. The enemy surrounded the city where Elisha was, and they thought they had trapped him. Meanwhile, they themselves were surrounded. <laughs> Today, God will open your eyes to see that everyone that wishes you evil, their end is closed. In the name of Jesus. I heard the story of a man of God who once served with Living Faith Church and they posted him to Bida. Bida is a town in Niger State. Heavily infested with witchcraft. If you don't believe me, go there and stay for one year. Then come back and give us the result. And when he went to this town, it was so demonized with witchcraft that believers were afraid even to come to church. And he began radical evangelism and people began to come to church. And then one of the chief occultists in the town came to him and said, Oh, oh no, no, that was not the story. The story had it that the house where he was staying, there was a woman there, and this woman had a child. And there was someone else, a neighbor, who was an occultic man, and he was always afflicting the child. And this is not, a, a, you know, occultic or witchcraft practice where they will hide and do it. I'm talking about the kind of witchcraft where they will afflict you in the night and in the day, they will come and meet you and say, Namiduam. Have you seen that type? You have not seen that type? 
That's why you are praying like this. When you see that type, your prayer life will change. You know, many of us we have funerized tongues. When they say pray now, your, your tongues has butter and jam. Huh? There are some level of witchcraft that you need to be exposed to a little. You will become a fire branded person. And this woman and her son was under the oppression of this man. So this pastor packed into the yard. And one day the child was convulsing. And then the woman ran to the pastor with the child. And the pastor called on God and the child jerked back to life. Then the occultic man came to him. He said, you, so you think you can come to this place and do any eh? Huh? He said, in seven days, they will carry your dead body. This is the occultic man talking to the, the pastor. No, no, the occultic man said, you will see. In seven days, you will see. How many of you have heard that kind of statement before? Say, you will see. You know what the, the pastor replied him? The pastor said, too late. He said, because you are the one that will see before I see the occultic man says, in seven days time you die. The pastor say, if you wake up by tomorrow, then I'm not a man of God. You know what the occultic man did? He went to his bed and wrote on the bed. He said, if I die, oh the pastor. <laughs> Today God is raising a man and a woman of power in this place. I said, if you know you are the one God is raising to tear down the altars of darkness, you will shout that amen three times with power. Two, amen. Three. Clap your hands and give Jesus praise. Hallelujah. He said, they that are with us are more than they. And when the eyes of the servants opened up in the spirits, that's why God needs to open our spiritual eyes. You are too carnal in your approach. The reason why you are afraid is because your, your perception is carnal. If only you can see the host of angels around you. If only you can see the people that have been strategized by God already to favor you. You are here thinking of what you will eat tomorrow. Meanwhile, the provision for the whole week has been done by God. The person that will give you the bread for tomorrow has already dreamt about it last night. That's why we must be spiritual. He says his eyes opened up and he saw chariots and horses of fire all around the city, around Elisha. So it is possible to build a siege. What is a siege? A siege is a military um, strategy. It's a strategy used by the military. Where by intelligence, they are able to plot the downfall of their opponent. Without the knowledge of that opponent. One of such kinds of strategy is what is called surprise attack. In other words, that this particular army will plan a surprise attack on the other one. So while those ones are sleeping, they just unleash terror on, on them. That's what a siege is. A siege can also be when, they, when, when an army decides to close in on another army surround the place so that they don't have anywhere to run to and then go and fish them out now it is possible for you to build a siege against the siege of the enemy whether you know it or not whether you are interested or not whether you do anything about it or not satan is planning towards you i'm not saying this to get you afraid but this is the truth in fact before you were born or when you were born satan being a very wise scientist and historian he has gone to study he has demons in every family studying the family history looking for the generation that will give back to a savior that will arise and raise an altar for god and bring that family out of the clutches of darkness so every generation he checks based on his knowledge and the day you were born, when he looked at you, he went to study history. 
He went to study the prophetic history of your family. What has been said concerning you? What dream did your mother have about you before you were born? And she told your father and he was there. He heard it. And then he uses all of this intelligence together to develop a plan to ensure that you don't live to fulfill that destiny. So whether you know it or not, whether you believe or not, the devil is planning you. Are you hearing me? The Bible says that we should not be ignorant of the devices of the devil. And for a long time we have been on the defensive for too long. We have been the oppressed too much uh, for too long. We have been at the receiving end. But God wants to give you intelligence so that you can know that you can raise a siege against the siege of the enemy. You can raise an ambush against the ambush of the enemy. You can plot a trap against the one setting the trap for your downfall. How many of you believe what I'm saying? Very true. You don't wait for Satan to attack you. No, you attack him before he attacks you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And tonight I want to show you from scripture a few keys. I call this common act that propel on common victories. If you perform any of these actions, you have built a very solid siege and trap against the enemy. If you can walk in any of these actions as a lifestyle, you will live in constant victory daily. How many of us are ready to experience that kind of victory? Now listen to this four to five acts that I will share with you and we are done. Number one, joy. Number one, joy. Don't do it like they beg you to do it. That means one of the expression of joy is what? A shout. Can you shout for Jesus again? Listen, and I tell you prophetically, in the spirit, anytime you shout, you provoke the power of God to act on your behalf. Whether you were joking about it or not, the Bible says the shout of a king is amongst them. Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10, the Bible tells us that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Isaiah 12 verse 3, he said with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. So joy is our strength. What gives you balance and stability is the joy of the Lord at work in your life. Joy is what you use to cash in on all that you have to experience or all that you have inherited by reason of salvation through Christ Jesus. He said, with joy you will draw water. Water speaks of refreshing. So the only way you can experience spiritual refreshing is when you activate the act and the lifestyle of joy. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17. This is where we will read. Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 17 to 19. He said, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines. Look at this situation. Look at this verse very clearly. He said, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, he said, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the fields yield no fruit, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. He said, yes, that means these are unfavorable situations. He said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord, and I will do what? Joy. Somebody shout that word, joy. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Why? He said, because the Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. And he will make me walk on high hills. That means that regardless of the fact that I had a bad harvest, even though my investments did not yield, I lost 800,000. I lost 200,000. I've been applying for jobs for six months. No job is forthcoming. 
Somebody fell sick in my house. There's nobody to no money to treat them. Why are things going bad around me? I keep sowing seeds and serving God. Yet it seems as though God is quiet about my situation. The, the, the prophet said, in the midst of all of that, I will do what? Joy. I will not complain. There are many believers who complain too much. He said, in the midst of that, if I want to turn around my situation, I will rejoice. The word will there means that it is an act of your will. You decide to rejoice. You decide to be a joy at all times. Joy is not happiness. Happiness is momentary. It's due to the, hap the, 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 the you know, circumstances around you. You can drink ice cream and be happy. Ladies, say amen. amen. Yeah, because I know that most guys don't like ice cream. Don't be so. I know what you like. You like solid food. Food. Say which ice cream? When Belen, Belen ever carry anything. Amen. You can lick ice cream and be happy. You can go to an amusement park and be happy. They can propose to you and you can even be happy. No, so. But all of that is short-lived. Joy comes from your will. You decide. It's like these things are trying to get on you and weigh you down and bring you into depression. But the prophet say, yet, despite all of this, I will rejoice. And I will joy in the God of my salvation. And then because of that, he says, this is what God will do. He will make my feet like the feet of a deer. A deer is a fast animal. All these situations that happened around me, negative situations, it has slowed, it has slowed down my pace towards destiny. He said, but this is what God will do. He will give you uncommon and unusual speed to catch up with the years that you have lost. Did he not say, I will restore to you the years that the canker worm has eaten, the caterpillar, the palmer worm and the locust, my great army. He told David in 1 Samuel chapter 30, he said, pursue, overtake and recover all. But how will it happen? When you decide to rejoice. Brothers and sisters, when you live a life of joy, <laughs> the enemy becomes confused about you. When I am down and oh my soul so weary when trouble comes and my heart burden me now I'm still now I am still waiting in the sun until you come on and sit a while with me. You raise me up. You raise me up. So I can stand on my Raise me up. You raise me up. To walk on some I am strong to hear. Philippians 4 verse 4 Philippians 4 verse 4 It says, Finally my brethren Rejoice always Is that it? Is that the place where it says Again I say That means it's a command It's not a suggestion Are you hearing me? It's a command When God says rejoice always It's a command to you that means you are not supposed to negotiate with it. You must decide to be joyful at all times. Regardless of what the devil throws at you. Somebody said when there is life, there is hope. How true. At least you didn't die in the midst of that situation, isn't it? The, 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 what the devil was waiting for was to hope. He was hoping that whatever he did in that season of your life was able to get at you and weigh you down. But when he sees you walking the next day rejoicing, 
dancing and singing the devil becomes confused the devil will begin to doubt himself huh he said rejoice always always psalm 16 verse 11 thou will show me the path of life in your presence is the fullness of joy so the presence of god is joy the atmosphere of the presence of god is joy the atmosphere of the presence of god is joy how you will know that the presence of god is in a place or in the life of a man is you find constant joy and the end of that verse is say at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore so when you have joy you have access to receive of the pleasures that his power can make available for you listen to me if what makes heaven heaven is the presence of joy then when you have joy as an atmosphere you have brought heaven into your life let me repeat what i said if what makes heaven heaven is the presence of joy then when you carry an atmosphere of joy around your life you have brought heaven into your life did he not teach us to pray and say your will be done in earth as it is where how many of you want to leave heaven on earth yeah it starts with a life of joy people get frustrated over the smallest of things they don't have transport to go to work tomorrow they are depressed what kind of a life is that their food stuff just finished and they've not paid salary because of that she refused to go to work then she called them and they walk and say i'm not feeling well nothing like i'm not feeling well oh he's crying there why food stuff people get depressed and discouraged over over mundane things the bible says that the life of a, a man's life does not consist by the abundance of things many of us see with all due respect many of us eh, the reason why god has not taken you to that place of abundance yet is because your heart is too attached to these things you are trying to derive your meaning and existence from these things things that god has made available for your upkeep and your comfort i saw a picture one time they showed the lion roaring and the lion they wrote a caption under it that means the lion spoke the lion said even if there are no animals in the jungle i will not eat grass and the bible says in psalms 34 i believe in verse 10 he said the young lions do lack and suffer hunger he said but those that seek the lord shall not lack any good thing somebody say joy so you must decide today to live a life of joy when joy is always in your life you are you have laid a proper ambush for the enemy in fact he becomes confused in attacking you are you hearing what i'm saying how do you attack a man that is joyful and happy somebody's sorrow tonight will be turned into joy in the name of jesus christ number two praise praise i wish we can do some dancing today is that true you guys that lead us in praise i hope you have it as a lifestyle it's not just to come and stand here and uh, no 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 no. see you as a worship worship is your lifestyle first before you become a worshiper praise is your lifestyle first is what you do you did it before you came here this morning so when you come here you discover that the spirit of praise will saturate even if all you are doing is say jump 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 people will dance the realm of the spirit is as atmosphere friendly there are a lot of music ministers that live in depression from monday to saturday then on sunday they now come and they give them mic and you expect to just shake the whole place now lie but the bible says he will exchange your your, your with a garment of praise he will exchange it for the spirit of heaviness praise Praise. Psalms 22 verse 3.
Psalms 22 verse 3. He said, but you are holy, enthroned in the praises of who? Enthroned in the praises of who? That means every time we lift up praise, whether as an individual or corporately as a people, you have created a throne for God to come and see. Now remember that God is not only king, God is a judge also. The Bible calls him the righteous judge. When you create the throne of praise in your life for God to sit on, he will judge your enemies and award you favor on a daily basis. You didn't hear what I just said. You didn't catch what I said. When you create a throne in your life through a lifestyle of praises, God will always arise and the judgment will always be in your favor praise second correct chronicles I, be, I, be, I beg your pardon chapter 20 verse 21 to 25 it contains the story of jehoshaphat when jehoshaphat had received the word from the prophet that they were not going to fight in this battle even though he had three nations coming against him this was what he did and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness, not prayer, praise, as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures. I think that's where they got that song. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. And your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. Let's sing it for a minute. You are good, and your mercy is forever. they did going to a battlefront singing going to a battlefront and you are singing that's why it's called divine ambushment this is not how you go to a battle you put choristers in front choristers are not trained to fight and then they are singing verse 22 please give it to us let's read down to verse 25 now when they began to sing and to praise the lord set ambushes not when they when they were praying god didn't do anything no. when they were praying god only spoke and said you will not fight but how are we going to go about the battle where you say we shouldn't fight what are we going to do they started to praise when they began to praise that's when god began to act listen to me when you pray you fight but when you praise god fights you didn't get what I said. I said when you pray, you fight. But when you praise, God fights. When you pray, at best, God will send angels. But when a man begins to praise, it's a sacrifice and incense that angels should not receive. God is jealous about your praise. That he doesn't mind arising as a man of war to destroy anything that will stop that praise. In fact, when you begin to praise, God arises to vanquish the enemy so much so that you can continually keep praising him. You understand that? The Lord set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. Next verse, look at the ambush. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly kill and destroy them. 
And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Sia, they helped to destroy today everyone whether spirit or man that has risen against you that is plotting your downfall whether they have conspired together wherever they are by the hand of God released today may they come together and kill each other for your sake may they fight against each other for your sake in the name of Jesus shout that name of three times one Two, three, clap your hands and give God praise. I said, clap your hands and give God praise. I said, clap your hands. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout with a voice of Zion. Hallelujah. Please be seated. We are going to pray. Just give me a few more minutes. We are going to pray. Praise. Praise is mysterious. There are different mysteries of praise. A mystery is a hidden secret. In other words, even the devil is not aware what it is. These are common acts that you engage that produces uncommon victories. One of the mysteries of praise is what I call the mystery of the shout. Psalms 47 verse 1 and verse 5 He said, Oh clap your hands all ye people And shout with a voice of triumph So in the realm of the spirit When you shout It is a symbol of victory It is a symbol of triumph And my Bible tells me 2 Corinthians 2 14 It said, But thanks be to God Who always makes us triumph Psalms 47 verse 5 he said, for God has gone up with a shout. How does God arise? With a shout. And the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. I call it the mystery of the shout. Or the mystery of shout. That's what we call high praises. Tehillah. Psalms 149 and from verse 5. That's what you call the high praise. High praise where you shout and every wall of Jericho around your life falls down flat you, you didn't hear me well maybe that's why you didn't say amen I said when you shout every wall of Jericho around your life will fall down flat some of you the wall of Jericho around your life is poverty poverty today that poverty is going down forever let the saints be joyful in glory it starts from joy first you can't praise without joy can i advise you minstrels and music ministers any day that you are not yourself don't sing until you get yourself are you hearing me because if you sing when you are not yourself you are transmitting what is in your spirit out you are multiplying depression just because you check your account balance and you saw 163 naira and you had to trek to service that day at least you trek for once like one way or the other we all have to sacrifice for god isn't it and just because you trek one day in honor of god you came to church to sing is a problem you just sat down there now what you are doing is the spirit of heaviness is already in your life and because you are anointed one of the things the anointing does is it multiplies the anointing of your life will now multiply that atmosphere of heaviness that's why you stand there for 15 minutes and nobody's moving but another person goes there and everybody's shouting without the, without him singing anything it's not the song you sang it's the atmosphere you brought and by extension to all music ministers here is the atmosphere let them sing aloud on their bed even on their bed he says sing go on we are reading down to verse 9 please quickly he said let the high praises of god be in their mouth he didn't just say praise he said what high praises be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand what would they do he said to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with the fetters of iron he said to execute on them the written judgment this honor 
have all his saints praise the Lord somebody shout hallelujah high praises shout so when they are when it's time for praise and worship don't just stand there waiting for your favorite song start dancing or praising and shouting if i do it before the, the, the song starts maybe you will make god to notice you first are you hearing me you don't need you don't need music or instrument to praise you can just dance like that if you don't believe me ask a madman the next time you see him who is playing music for him and he's dancing and when he sees you not dancing he will make sure you dance with him there yes or no if a madman can compel you to his own praise how much more you that is alive and in your right mind he said let everything that has bread do what praise the lord somebody needs to start living the life of praise number three obedience obedience disarms the enemy let me say it again so you hear what i said obedience disarms the enemy you know what it means to disarm a man that means you dispossess him of his weapon against you show me a man that walks in genuine obedience to god i show you a man that the enemy is afraid of going near deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and then verse 7 is there and it shall come to pass if you diligently obey diligently obey the voice of the lord your god to observe carefully all his commandments which i command you today that the lord your god will set you high above all nations of the earth just because you are obedient your obedience brings about supernatural elevation somebody say elevation he said the lord your god will set you high above what all nations somebody say all nations when i say obedience i'm not say, talking about obedience as in you know political people say be obedient no not that one he said the lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be what defeated before your face what kind of magic is that he said they will come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways that means perfect victory against the enemy how does it happen a lifestyle of obedience some of the greatest victories you can have some of the battles you can fight and achieve victories is in obedience what did jesus tell the disciples in john chapter 2 when there was no wine in the wedding she told the disciples even though jesus has said my time has not come she went to the disciples she said if you want to get this guy to act whatever he says do can god find a man like that in your family everybody in your family is negotiating with god anyhow everybody in your family is breaking one commandment of god or another if only god can find you one man that will covenant his or herself and say i will remain obedient to the commands of god and i will show you a life that the devil is afraid of psalms 112 from verse 1 he said praise the lord blessed is the man that fears the lord that delight greatly in his commandments in verse 2 he said his seed shall be mighty on the earth the generation of the upright shall be blessed verse 3 this is all attributed to obedience so he said wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness will abide forever verse 4 unto the, the upright there ariseth light in the darkness read down to verse 10 all these blessings lined up for an obedient man if only god will say go and you go sit and you sit you want to see a life of miracles be obedient the next time God say empty your account don't ask questions empty it first before you ask questions you are going to your office in the napep and the spirit of God at, at a point he tell you stop you stop he say calm down you calm down pay the napep and trek on foot the remaining distance to your office he say ah God me me trek and that would have been an accident that God would have averted obedience 
God does not have to explain to you why you should do certain things, particularly when there is an emergency situation. He has seen the plan of the enemy. So he just gives you a mystery. Act it out. We can settle the explanation later. Just be obedient. Somebody, you wake up in the morning and your neighbor comes and insults you from nowhere. <laughs> and the Spirit of God just tells you, keep quiet. <laughs> Lord, me, quiet. No, they are only too much for this compound. I need to show them. I need to show them. Then you now come to church on Sunday. You are good and your messes. After you don't show them. Some will even remove their hair tie and tie it. Say we don't close from church. If I finish you here. Obedience. When you live a life of obedience, you set an ambush for the enemy. The enemy not know the trap he's walking into. When he meets a man who walks in obedience. Number four. I call it the dominion of silence. The dominion of silence. Write it down. That's one of the ways you set an ambush against the enemy. The dominion of silence. Psalms 46 verse 10. Be still and know that I am the Lord. Be still and know that I am the Lord. Be still and know. Be still means be quiet. Hold your peace. He didn't ask you to give any explanation. He didn't ask you to talk. He said, be still. Exodus 14 verse 13. Stand still and see the salvation of God. Now that is almost impossible for a natural man a human being to do particularly a human being you know as human beings we always want to show ourselves we always want to create an impression listen many of us need to quit impressing the wrong people in our life you didn't hear what i said your mind is at home you didn't hear what i just said i said many of you need to quit impressing the wrong people in your life something happened and you want to explain yourself the reason why you ex we want to explain when you can be quiet is because you want to impress others you want to create an impression about you why not allow God do the explanation I call it the dominion of silence do you know that sometimes the greatest answer to the challenges of life is to be quiet The Bible speaks of forbearance. No be so. He said, Thou therefore my son, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Is it every hard time that you pray away? Then the Bible says that the trial of your faith walketh patience. Aren't there some furnaces that you have to pass through? Aren't there challenges in life where, that you have to go through and be quiet? The dominion of silence. Why do I call it the dominion of silence? In Genesis chapter 3, you remember that God created man and he gave Adam dominion. And when God gave Adam dominion, Adam ceded that dominion to the serpent. How? When God came to the garden after Adam had after man had fell, God asked a question: Who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I said you should not eat? What did Adam do? Instead of Adam to take the blame and say, yes, Lord, I ate. I'm sorry. Knowing fully well that God gave him dominion. Adam said, the woman will you give me? Oh. The moment Adam said that, he ceded his dominion to his wife, Eve. He said, woman. The woman, ma. She said, ah, the serpent. That the serpent. Can you imagine that statement. The serpent. So the serpent went and plucked the fruit and opened your mouth like this ah, and put the fruit inside. Say the serpent. And when God turned to the serpent, the serpent didn't say anything. 
that silence was what the serpent used to retrieve dominion from man because when jesus will come as the last adam the bible says in isaiah 53 verse 7 that as a lamb is led to the slaughter he opened not his mouth all through the passion of jesus he was quiet you know why because he knew that his death was going to be victory over sin and over satan first corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 he said for had they known had the priests of this world known they would not have verse 8 rather he said they would not have crucified the lord of glory so the reason why jesus did not talk when he was going through the passion was because if he had spoken he would have revealed the wisdom behind that activity and satan would have known it and immediately stopped them from killing him you didn't hear what i said god you didn't hear me when you come to church come with your brain please listen listen if jesus had spoken that this death you people should not cry because when i hang on that cross it will be the defeat the bible says heaven spoil principalities and powers how would you know that hanging on the cross dying a shameful death was actually defeat over the enemy that's why jesus had to be quiet the pressure of the affliction he was going through would have made him open his mouth to talk even pilate tried to make him talk but jesus was quiet the bible will say he answered them not a word why because it was a mystery that was hidden from ages but appointed for our glory that's how he retrieved the dominion back sometimes eh, your dominion in life is in silence you don't speak let your work speak for you silence you must not reply everybody are you hearing me you must not reply everybody you mustn't when you walk in this particular key can i tell you what will happen to the devil he will be confused about you he will not know where to attack you because all the attacks he doesn't know whether you are feeling it because you have said nothing but the moment you are in church one sunday morning and they just call you they say mama pressy mama pressy you're picking oh you're picking you're picking the house they converse he say hey then you just run out of church I say my picking, I beg, I beg, I beg. They go house my picking. Sit down, say, okay, I don't see how to get them. Attack the children. It's what you say that gives Satan the blueprint for your attack. Silence. Silence. God told Joshua, this is how you will overcome Jericho. Trek around for six days silent i'm sure when they were going round <laughs> i'm sure when they were going round the, you know jericho had fences that were as large as a you know were so large seven chariots could go on it so the fence was like a house there were people living on the fence of jericho rahab made so much money from prostitution she built a hotel on top I'm sure that while they were going around the wall, the people of Jericho would stay through the window and be mocking them, insulting them. See these people, foolish people. Now trek on they trek. When they finish to trek, we we'll scatter on collect with on carry come. Eh? Now only on no God. You think they just trek around quietly? They were hearing the enemies. Imagine you walking around enemy's territory and they insult you, soldiers. And God said, don't do anything. At least we know what happened in the key to old gates. No be so. Uh -huh. God said, keep quiet and trek round. And as they were trekking round, there was a spiritual host cycling the whole of Jericho. For every step that they took in the moment of silence, the foundations of the wall of Jericho was going down. It was sinking. Jericho didn't just fall on that day. It started falling from the first day. Some of you will have to learn from today 
how to be quiet over situation. He said, but apostle, it's too much that I have to cry. Go and cry in your secret. When you come out, come out with an atmosphere and an attitude of joy. Silence. And we know the end of that story. The Bible says that the wall came down. The dominion of silence. Finally, before we pray, I told you about joy, about praise, obedience, the dominion of silence. Lastly, engaging the ministry of the prophetic. Engaging the ministry of the prophetic. Engaging the ministry of the prophetic. There are battles you can't fight on your own. There are battles where you need divine support. If Elisha was not in that town of Dothan, it would have been reduced to dust. One of the things that God will do for you, listen very carefully, everybody, listen today. Listen to what I'm saying. Regardless of your denomination and your belief, one of the agencies that God has created on the earth for the acceleration and the lifting of his children into destiny is the prophetic. You can never rise to some formidable height without the ministry of the prophetic in your life. There are times when your prayer and fasting for three years cannot do anything. Are you hearing me? Look at this, the testimony of that, that lady. Called apostle. Apostle said, put the phone on your mother. The woman that had been convulsing over five times. Non-stop. Whatever apostle did on that phone, only God knew. But the convulsion stopped till today. It's called the ministry of the prophetic. That there are men that has God has cut covenant with them. And God has invested on them what I call an economy of grace. The grace on them is more than them. The grace on them is enough to deliver a nation. The grace on them is enough to deliver a family. He said by a prophet, he brought them out of captivity. And by a prophet, they were preserved. All you need to do is find those men that have been allocated to your life and connect to them engage the ministry of the there are some battles you don't if you must fight engage the prophetic let that man or that woman of god speak over your life whatever you need to do she told them he said whatever he says do it the prophetic the prophetic how did they get the victory in second chronicles 20 it was a prophet that spoke believe the lord your god so shall you be established believe many of us are here and you are spiritual you are prayerful but there is no prophet around your life you know why because all the prophets that god sent to you you commonize them you you exchange them to your friends you make them your best friend say it's not a person I beg, I beg. maybe a person will they go greet after service ah, i'll go and line up then after the service then you just come to apostle. It's apostle. That person doesn't understand spiritual things. Am I saying lie down on the ground? No. But there are times when you go with an expectation that one word from this man is able to turn around the situations in my life. You go knowing you are to receive from a prophet. There are some of you, God has raised you as prophets in your family. But because of this sickness or plague of overfamiliarity, that's why nobody in your family is rising. But the day they will recognize you as such. There are things that, listen, there are battles I know that my 10 hours prayer, what 10 hours prayer will do for me, a seed of faith to my prophet can handle it. I'm not teaching you to be lazy. But be discerning. Understand your seasons. You are looking for a job. A mega breakthrough in your career. And you went to your prophet empty hand. Say, Papa, pray for me. I need a job. Congratulations. I was listening. Oh, 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 you, know, oh no, you are quiet now. Because I've entered this one. No, don't, don't be quiet. Oh, I will say it here. I was listening to a prophet. I think it was prophet Hubert Angel. 
he said the candidates of our presidential election here all of them have gone to visit him I said they went to meet him he said who will be the the next president and he asked them he said do you want me to tell you who will be the next president or do you want me to pray for you and make you the next president because kings are not installed on their own they are installed by prophets it was Samuel that turned Saul a last born to becoming a king over Israel he said is it not because the Lord has chosen you to become commander over his people and in one sitting Saul became another man and you know one of the reasons why Saul failed at the end of his ministry he stayed far away from that prophet and so you, you but angel said one of them came to visit him and he said when that one was going he, he said I have gift for you sir he said okay where is your gift this is somebody who wants to be a president this is the gift he brought to be a president he perfume he carried perfume and some nonsense brothers and sisters sacrifice is the way up whether you like it or not you want to be president over the most populous black nation what is your offering perfume is it robbery you want to kidnap the president <laughs> apostle i need breakthrough i need a job i need a, 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 a mega breakthrough now and what's the seed one thousand naira inside envelope You know what you have you have even if i prophesy to you receive the job that act has destroyed it there are desperate times where you have to take desperate measures there are positions that require a level of sacrifice when israel were confronted with the philistines in first samuel chapter 7 the bible says samuel didn't just pray he offered a sacrifice what was the sacrifice the bible said he took a suckling lamb the lamb was still sucking breast and god had told them in leviticus he said you must not boil a goat in his mother's milk that means you are not permitted to use a goat for anything until it has been weaned from the milk of his mother but samuel said the the, the life of israel is at stake he took that and sacrificed and the bible says the lord thundered the great thunder some of us the reason why we are not seeing appreciable or notable levels of breakthrough check your your understanding of the prophetic it's too minute it's too low you are trusting god to break into the millionaire status and you came to your prophet what did you come with plate set of plates dinner plate brothers and sisters who must be wise i'm not saying this because i'm looking for your money i've never stood on this platform in four years to ask for anything and i don't think i need any of that i don't think so the things we teach you if we were not practicing it we will not be where we are a lot of other, there are other pastors who during their birthday they will stand and say you must go into my life you must during my birthday i look for who to give there's just too much but you want to engage you want to bring down captivity in a lineage ah, understand what to do today god will give us wisdom in the name of jesus are you ready to pray now let me tell you something about the prophetic there are two dimensions of the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension and there is the creative dimension revelatory means god will speak to me and say this is so so person so so problem this and this and that and that that is one dimension there are possibilities that can happen through that but there is the creative dimension where i don't need to hear from god but on the strength of the mantle i carry now you see you need to discern men and mantles the size of a man's mantle is not the size of the man some of you are here but the mantles you are carrying are for nations the day will come when you step your feet in that nation and then you will be surprised how powerful you are some of you are here the mantles on you is to take over systems it's not just to be one small businessman it's to take over and have dominion on a system 
there is a creative dimension on the strength of that anointing or that grace i can look at your life and by words create a future that you never expected create a future that you never saw it's called the prophetic can i tell you something my life before we pray some of you you will not believe what i will tell you but some of you pray more than me i hear what i'm telling you some of you pray more than me brother manga i suspect you pray more than me i suspect benny i'm telling you some of you pray more than me when i see some of us the way we pray i say hey now wow if only i can get energy like that but you see in this life eh i learned something from a man of god called apostle joshua selman he said you surround your destiny with mysteries as with a chariot you is only prayer you know may i understand the prophetic this is my life we have been teaching on spiritual warfare this is the fourth sunday not one attack on me or on any member of this assembly you think it is ordinary look at all the things i've been revealing to you you think there were no provocations in the spirit realm there are mysteries there are mysteries my destiny there are speakings of god that surrounds me i have met with men whose words surround my life you just if you don't believe me plot with a witch and try to attack a trial will convince you nobody's what they talk as when, when they want to sell something they say a trial i remember i went somewhere one time and somebody brought a gift to me i was in my room my hotel room and the lord spoke to me and he said take this seed and go and give it to so so man of god i was meeting him for the first time as i took the seed it was a little seed prior to that time months before that time i had the opportunity to meet him but i refused because i wasn't carrying a seed i don't just want to meet a man of god and not experience something not especially the one i know carries a grace look at that testimony from port Harcourt. text message i didn't call her text message she will be released on hand but you you are here you have bought the prophet no be so you have bought him bought his house and everything i took the seed little seed how much one thousand dollars took it to him finished gave him when he began to pray the first thing i noticed was that he started saying the things that god told me five years ago as though he was reading them from a jotter then when he had finished saying it he began to prophesy immediately when i left that place i knew something had shifted i don't care if i lose money or material things as long as i carry grace that's more important the bible says that god is able to make all grace abound towards you are we ready to pray we are going to pray today and i'm going to prophesy over your life and if you believe in the prophetic you will come next sunday for miracle service with the testimony that you thought was going to be a prayer point the way you said amen just tells me you don't believe what i'm saying i have seen god through the speakings of my mouth by the mercy and the grace of god i have seen god turn people's life around even me i began to envy their miracles I've seen it. I will be lying if I said otherwise. I'll be lying. That's the reason why day by day I become afraid of cursing. If you can send text message and say she'll be released on harm and the kidnappers released, that means if you say you will be kidnapped. So that's why I don't, I don't curse. So you can do anything you want to do me. You can annoy me. You can do anything. It's okay. You can go. But you'll not go scot free because i will not reply you but the prophecies and the mantle surrounding my life will reply you in this tribe that we belong to this spiritual tribe if you talk against us you will go down like that stand on your feet we are going to pray
I feel in my spirit to speak over and prophesy over some people. But wherever you are in the next two minutes, I want you, if you can, open your mouth and just pray in the spirit. If you can. Just for two minutes. Open your mouth and speak in the language of the spirit. I just feel something in my spirit. I feel, I feel a heavy pregnancy. God is about to do something in someone's life. Are you praying? Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Please pray. You are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God of yourself. You got times and seasons in your hands. Something is about to turn around for you. You got I'm going to prophesy and declare over our lives today. I feel, I just, I feel an anointing for the creative power of God in this place. I feel, I really feel heaven inside of me to prophesy. But there are two things I want us to attack in prayers before we go tonight. And God told me that we should do it before the end of the service. Two things. We are going to arrest ancestral issues. Number two, we are going to arrest stagnation. What did he tell the serpent? He said, the seed of the woman shall bruise your head. And you shall bruise where? His heel. In the realm of the spirit, your legs are representative of your foundations. What I mean is your origins. God never introduces a man to his generation without first exhuming the foundation of that man. Often you will see, listen to me, often you will see in the Bible, this person, the son of this, the son of this, the son of that. God and Satan are concerned about foundations. And Satan knows that once you can attack the foundations and compromise it, the descendants will forever remain under oppression. He said, if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Some of you are here and there are a lot of ancestral impediments around your life. A lot of fraternities by your forefathers with spirits from the underworld. And even though you are in Christ and you are a new creature, you are still being trailed by those spirits. How? Look at the patterns transgenerationally. Look at the things that happened to your mom. Now it's happening to you. There are families where you see the same issue happen to the firstborn, the secondborn, the thirdborn, and the fourthborn. Those are cycles. We must arrest those ancestral issues this night. If you believe, you say amen. Amen. Some of you, some of you, your, the ancestral impediment in your house is marriage. There's a spirit fighting against marital settlement. It's either you settle with the wrong person or there will be a lot of delay 
and in the midst of that delay you will settle with the wrong person or you settle with the right person and one of you dies let me tell you a story about abraham briefly before we pray i hope you know that there was an ancestral spirit at work in abraham's lineage that's why god made a covenant with him barrenness did not start with abraham's wife it started with his father the bible says in genesis 11 that abraham's father terror it was when he was 70 years that he started having children is that a cause and so sarah married into the family and she became barren for 25 years that was not enough rebecca became barren 20 years fourth generation rachel was loved by jacob and her womb was closed we are going to arrest ancestral issues this night listen the way you are saying the amen is annoying me already i said we will arrest ancestral issues this night me i don't have who have arrested it is you now i want us to pray for you are you hearing what i'm saying we are going to arrest it some of you there is a spirit at work in the family any other thing can work but the moment you begin to rise in finances it's like all hell will break loose on you there are families where once one person begins to rise in wealth satan will make the others impoverished and poor so they become they become dependent on that one till they wreck that one person down it's an error it's a curse it must be broken are we together the bible says jabez prayed he had an honorable destiny but someone had affected his foundation with negativity but Jabez prayed and called on the god of israel are you ready to pray lift your right hand god told me something this week you know god taught me a new style to pray he said anytime you want to pray warfare tell the people to lift up their right hand i said lord why he said because it is written in exodus 15 verse 6 that the right hand of god is glorious in power and god told me anytime they lift that right hand i arise and anytime they bring it down their enemies are going down you see you see what i'm talking your amen tells me you don't have <laughs> are you ready to pray say i'm in the name of jesus in the name of jesus Every ancestral pattern, every ancestral pattern, cycle, cycle, and limitation, and limitation, in my bloodline, in my bloodline, trailing my destiny, trailing my destiny, be scattered by fire, be scattered by fire, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray, lift your right hand and pray, lift your right hand and pray, lift your right hand and pray, let ancestral notes, limitations. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every transgenerational pattern. Every transgenerational pattern. That means that it happens from one generation after another. Some of you after this night, listen. Some of you after this night, you need to go and study your family history. I told you last week that before you see a fine girl and say you want to marry, go and study her history first. You need to know what you are coming against. Patterns that exist from one generation after another. 
Say after me, every transgenerational pattern. Every transgenerational pattern. Lingering in my bloodline. Lingering in my bloodline. Today. Today. By the hand of God. By the hand of God. And in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus. I arrest those patterns. I arrest those patterns. And I declare them over. And I declare them over. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. I wish we had the time, but finally, we are going to confront stagnation. Stagnation. It looks like you are making progress, but of a truth, you are just at one point. You put all your effort, you sank all your investment in that business. But truly speaking, after six months, it doesn't look like you have made any notable progress. All your mates have gotten married. You are matching for all of them. You are buying Ashwebi for all of them. But you are here. One relationship will not settle for you. It's a pattern of stagnation. You must arrest it. You must arrest it. Stagnation. Some of you are stagnant in your finance. You just can't. You are not going back. But you cannot just go forward. Are you ready to arrest it this night? I can't hear you. I said, are you ready to address it this night? Lift your right hand. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I stand by the authority of the blood covenant. I stand by the authority of the blood covenant. And I decree and declare. And I decree and declare. Every form of stagnation. Every form of stagnation. Every form of retrogression. Every form of retrogression. In my life. In my life. In my finances. In my finances. In my destiny. In my destiny. Be destroyed. Be destroyed. Forever. Forever. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Confront it. Let stagnation be rolled away. Let it 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 be rolled away. Please put your hand down. Can we pray one more prayer? I apologize because of time. I just saw, I just saw something in the spirit. I saw rings. You know ring? I saw rings falling from people's fingers. Some of you, the reproach in your life is as a result, is result of a spiritual covenant or union that you are attached to without your knowledge. But the Bible declares, it says, Strangers shall hear my voice and obey. They shall come out from their hiding places. After this prayer, any of such evil covenant or union that is at work in your life mysteriously, it will be exposed and it will be broken. 
Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every evil covenant. Every evil covenant. Every evil union. Every evil union. At work in my life. At work in my life. Without my knowledge. Without my knowledge. Every illegal connection. Every illegal connection. To any spirit. To any spirit. That is not of God. That is not of God. That has brought limitation. That has brought limitation. Or setbacks. Or setbacks. Over my life. Over my life. By the blood of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus. I renounce those covenants. I renounce those covenants. I break those unions. I break those spirits. And I command those spirits. I command those spirits. Go! Go! Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and Wave your hands and give the Lord praise. Thou will own that worthy to be praised. Thou will own that worthy to be praised. Just symbols. Thou will own that worthy to be praised. Thou will own that worthy to be praised. Thou will own that worthy to be praised. Lift your hands. I speak by the ministry of the prophetic and the apostolic anointing that is available in this house. I want to confront retrogression in your life. Retrogression means you keep going backwards. You are not making progress. You are not marking time on one spot. You are going backwards. That's what we call rising and falling. Any force of retrogression at work in your life. By this heavy mantle of the apostolic and the prophetic. I challenge that force. I challenge those powers. And I decree and declare. Retrogression is over in your life. It's over in your life. It's over in your life. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray against stagnation. Either you are experiencing stagnation in your career, or in your relationship status, or in your family. No one is rising. Everybody is at one spot. Anytime a breakthrough is about to come for you to move to the next level, you just have a dream all of a sudden. You see yourself in your secondary school, or you see yourself looking for something you'll never find. That demon will go down today. In the name of Jesus Christ, I confront the spirit of stagnation. And I command, be free from stagnation. Be free from stagnation. Be free from stagnation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. There are three kinds of covenants. There are spoken covenants. There are written covenants. There are blood covenants. I want to challenge. The Lord is telling me that I need to pray and cancel every evil word that has been spoken over you by anybody in authority. Anyone in any kind of spiritual authority that has spoken evil over you, I want to renounce and cancel that covenant. Lift your hands. I stand by the power of the blood of the Lamb. And in the name of Jesus, any word that has been spoken against your destiny, 
against your life, whether this year or last year or years ago, with or without your knowledge, I cancel those confessions. I cancel those declarations. I renounce those declarations in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, some of you are here. Truly speaking, you know your mother or your father, somebody in authority, spoke a curse over your life. And from that day till today, for some of you, the person is even dead, probably. Or maybe a witch casted a spell on you, and that spell became a curse over your life. And you have experienced limitation in a particular area from year in, year out. It's about to be broken. The Bible says it shall come to pass in that day that the burden of the Assyrians shall be lifted from your shoulder and the yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed by the anointing. I declare by the power of the anointing and by the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb that was crucified for your sake, in the name of Jesus, every curse over your life is broken now. It's broken now. It's broken now. It's broken now. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands, please. Eyes closed everywhere. Every satanic union or covenant that is at work in your life, whether it was entered into by your family members or by your ancestors, or it was entered into by you and the spirit in your dream. I destroy those covenants. I destroy those unions. I destroy those covenants. I destroy those unions. I destroy those covenants. I destroy those unions. And by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic, I separate you now. I separate you from those spirits. I separate you now. In the name of Jesus. I separate you by fire. By fire. By fire. By fire. I command that unclean spirit to live your life now. Live your finances now. Live your marriage now. Live your bedroom now. Paul said a great and effectual door is open against a open for me. But there are many adversaries. Ah! Parando Koskapata. A priest Paranda Lakatiaka. I come by the rod of the Melchizedek priesthood in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and in the name of you who are the key of David that opens and no man shuts and shuts and no man opens. I command those adversaries be gone from your life. I rebuke the devourer now. I rebuke the adversary now. I rebuke the adversary now. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray for breakthroughs, 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 breakthroughs. At the end of this series, there should be doors that were closed once, open and open forever. He said, Thus said he that had the key of David, that opens and no man shuts, and shuts and no man opens. Any door that the enemy has closed against your destiny, any door that has been closed over your life before now, I stand by the God of heaven, the God of Jeshurun, that rides the heavens to help you. I declare in the name of Jesus, let those doors be open now. Doors open. 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 
I declare in the name of Jesus Christ and by the God that fulfills every prophetic word in this house and by the graces and the covenants that I am connected to I declare over your life in the next 30 days from today from today multiple breakthroughs multiple breakthroughs multiple breakthroughs multiple breakthroughs multiple breakthroughs Can I declare favor over your life before we are done? I told you that there are three doors that favor will open for you. Number one, the door of opportunities. Whether it's a job opportunity, a ministry opportunity, a business opportunity, destiny relationships, those opportunities. Number two, the door of resources that you will never be bankrupt of resources every resource that you need to prosecute destiny but number three most importantly the door to the hearts of men because when the hearts of men are open to you you have opportunities and resources lift your hands i want to pray in the name of jesus christ of nazareth let those three doors of favor open over your life let those doors open over your life Receive access to opportunities. Receive access to resources. Receive access to the heart of men. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray. I'm still praying. The anointing. Listen. Samuel told Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 10. He said, as you go, you shall meet three men two of them carrying loaves of bread he said they shall salute you and give you some of their loaves of bread people that don't know you from adam they have no business with you but because of the favor of god that is about to mantle your life that that anointing is about to come on you right now i decree and declare listen the grace that forces men to love and like you wherever you go whether you travel or you are in town let that grace land on your life now i prefer that grace to land on your life now in the name of jesus you are always used to helping people and giving out nobody has given to you nobody has helped you the mantle of favor that makes men go out of their ways that makes me i know what i'm telling you listen listen i'm not just speaking english to you in my small life i've seen this i've seen this i have seen men that don't know me from adam go out of their ways to help me in strange lands i've never left the bread the shores of this country i've never left the shores of this country but god has raised people who have not seen my face before fighting to bless me that grace will come on you today by force listen i pray in the name of jesus the mantle for divine help both locally and internationally let it come on your life now let it come on your life now help them let it come on your life now let that mantle come on your life now in the name of jesus christ The kind of help you will receive after today. Many of you will ask yourself, where were these? Where were these? Where were all these men? In the name of Jesus. I feel an anointing. I speak to the north, the south, the east, the west. If I be a man of God. I declare in seven days may strangers arise from every corner of this earth to help you. May strangers come from the north, the south, the east, the west to help you in the name of Jesus. Your life will never remain the same after tonight. Your life is moving from glory to glory. Some of you have not not experienced what is called abundance. 
Some of you don't know what abundance is. Some of you experience it once in a while. But in the name of Jesus Christ, who has all power and authority in heaven and on earth, according to the riches of his glory, I declare over your life from today, super abundance. Super abundance. I did say abundance. Super abundance. In the name of Jesus. And I declare from tonight, anyone that wishes evil against you will go down suddenly. They don't have to say it. Just for wishing you evil, they go down like the force of gravity. Any conspiracy against your life, against your lifting, and against your destiny, I declare by the God of heaven and by the God of vengeance, let what happened to Haman in, in the book of Esther happen to them. Let every conspiracy be overturned in your, in your good. Let every conspiracy be overturned for the good. And I declare finally, I place a curse on any human. Forgive me, you may not like the way I'm declaring. The Bible says to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the vengeance of the Lord. It can also be proclaimed. Any man, any spirit, any animal plotting your downfall or your death, I put a curse of destruction on their life. I put a curse of destruction on their life. I put a curse of destruction on their life. Let the earth fight them. Let the weather fight them. May they go down for your sake. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Shall they bring Amen. your hands and give the Lord praise. You are glorious, so glorious in your You are glorious, say. You are glorious, so glorious in your way. You are glorious, say. we thank you tonight let these words fall upon the life of your children like rain and let them be hastened into fulfillment in Jesus precious name we are way out of time tonight but please while we stand if there's anyone here you don't know the Lord Jesus you need to make the Lord Jesus the, uh, Jesus, the Lord of your life you are not born again or you want to rededicate your life to the Lord. This opportunity is for you before we close. No movement everywhere. Everybody standing. If you are here and you need to give your heart to the Lord. You are standing in the crowd right now. Or you are listening online. You are under the sound of my voice. Wherever you are. I want you to just raise your right hand up gently. Raise your right hand up gently. You want to make Jesus the Lord of your life. You are tired of your old ways. Or you want to rededicate your life afresh. You want to mean business with God. You want to serve God with holy fear. You want to serve Him in spirit and in truth from today. Please raise your right hand where you are. While we stand. This is an opportunity and a moment. God bless you. Please celebrate God. I see a hand lifted. God bless you. Please lift your hand where you are. Just raise your right hand where you are. This is your moment. Don't hide in the crowd. Don't wait to be the last. Now if your hand is lifted up, please make your way to the front quickly. I want to lead you to make a prayer. Please celebrate God for them as they come. Forget about who is around you. Don't be shy. Don't look at the eyes of humans. If you need to say yes to Jesus tonight, then do it tonight before him.
please stretch your hands towards the person in front. If you are following online, you can just repeat the prayers with me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. You in front, say after me, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I repent of my sin. I repent of my old ways. I receive you into my life. I believe that you died and rose again. That I will be saved. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus name. Amen. Now lift your hand up. Lift your right hand up. Father I thank you. For this one. Your word declares that there is joy in heaven when one soul repents. Lord we thank you because there is joy right now in heaven. And even amongst your children. We decree and declare by the authority of the word of God. That his sins are forgiven. We decree and declare that he is a new creature in Christ Jesus. And from today we break the power of sin. We break the power of death over his life. And we declare that you are victorious from today. Let him serve you all the days of his life. In Jesus mighty name.